In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so this Thursday, February 25, 2021, the gospel we're going to comment on for uh, today's Mass is the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 to 12. So we'll read it. Jesus said to his disciples, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which one of you would hand his son a stone when he asks for a loaf of bread. Or a snake when he asks for a fish. If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Let's stop there and let's consider the very, very beautiful, encouraging, heartwarming message that St. Matthew, through our Lord's uh, words here, is trying to give us. So uh, not too long ago, we talked about prayer also, right? And how we said in that commentary that... God never says no to our prayers. God always says yes. No, sorry. God always responds <laughs> to our prayers, right? So we can begin from there. And this one is a reinforcement to what we commented on that uh, occasion. Our Lord himself says, ask and it will be given to you. Ask. All you need to do is ask. Seek and you will find. Okay? Knock and the door will be open to you. I got my little Ava hovering over here. Okay. So, we will always receive a response. Okay? We will always receive a response. Now, the question is, <laughs> Ava wants to join us. That's the question, right? Okay. Now, God always listens. God always listens to us and God will always respond because God is our Father. That is why when He taught us to pray, He taught us to address God as our Father who art in heaven. Okay? So there is a very important aspect here about our relationship with God that we need to really, really appreciate and understand as we pray. Okay, So when we pray, keep in mind you are not praying to a distant being somewhere up in the clouds. No. You are not praying and petitioning for your need from a grand provider who is somehow there uh, 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 in the universe, okay? Like this new age concept of, uh, you know, uh, just desire it and the universe is going to respond to you. <laughs> There's nothing farther from the truth than that kind of a concept, okay? So those of you who are fans of The Secret, for example, okay? That is really, really very, very false. That's very wrong. Okay, you don't need a universe, a a a a um, 
impersonal universe because God has revealed himself to us through Jesus Christ as a father. Okay? That God is our father. He is not just the, a, a benevolent benefactor. No, he is not just some generous kind of, of being somewhere out there in the universe who gives us an, what we need and listens to what, to what we want. No, God is our father. And that's the very first thing we should keep in mind when we pray. We are praying to our father. Okay, and that is not only an image, that's a reality. That is a reality that Jesus has revealed to us that we have to be very, very convinced about and conscious about every time we pray. Now, I think the question we need to ask ourselves is, well, how do we relate to our Father? Okay. How do you relate to your own human father? Okay. That is why paternity, human paternity, is really an image of the heavenly father. Okay. It makes it a lot easier for us to pray to our father God when we know how to relate with our human father. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. How? What is our relationship with our own human father? If we have a good relationship with our own human father, our father on earth, then relating to our father God is easy. Very easy. But if we don't have a good relationship with our own human father, well, we will struggle. We will struggle to understand how we should relate to our father God. See? So that is that is something to keep to keep in mind. That is something to to uh to really really try and understand. Okay? If we do not know how to relate to our own human father whom we see whom we are supposed to uh uh, uh have a relationship with how in the world are we even going to imagine how to deal with our Father God? Okay. So I'm not saying it's not possible that people who grew up fatherless will not know how to deal with our Father God, but it facilitates matters, right? Uh, knowing how to deal with our own human father will facilitate matters in terms of our own spiritual life. And here is where you see that our spiritual life is very, very human in a sense it has very uh, 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 a big connection to our humanness to our human nature and how we uh, relate to our own human fathers is the prototype of how we will relate with our own father god okay or maybe it's the other way around really but anyway our human experience is a good start to help us understand how we should relate to our own, uh, to, to God as our Father. Okay, three ways, three ways that can help us pray to God as a Father. And this we call from our own experience with our own human fathers, right? The first disposition we should have when we pray to our Father God is one of humility. Humility. We cannot pray with a cocky attitude. We cannot talk to God with a prideful uh, appreciation uh, of ourselves. Well, I'm distracted a little bit because, you know, little little Ava gives me her toys. So. <laughs> okay. Huh? So we have to deal with God, okay, with humility. Not like entitled brats who think that we are entitled to some favors that are to be given to us, right? No, we're not entitled to anything except for heaven. And until we're ready to get there, 
Okay? We cannot have an entitled mentality like the prodigal son. Remember the prodigal son? What did the prodigal son uh, um, tell his father? Hey, Papa, you know, uh, give me what, uh, what is supposed to be my inheritance. And let me uh, live my life the way I want. I'm tired of being... Uh, of serving you here i'm tired of uh being in your in your household let me uh you know be myself give me give me my inheritance and i'm gonna make something of myself his father thought okay <laughs> have it what happened to him he squandered all of the good things his father gave him he squandered his inheritance and he in shame, in shame, would have to come back to his father and says, well, you know, forgive me, I messed up. Can, I, can you just get me back to your own house? See? So, not good. We have to be humble. We have to approach God with humility the same way that we have to approach our own human fathers with humility every time we ask for things. Right? Second, we have to approach God with affection, with affection, with the love that a, a respectful and adoring child would render to his father. And it is an affection that is actually natural. It is not something that you put on. It's not something sentimental. It's not something just emotional. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. You can say all the I love you's you want, but you know, uh, genuine affection, genuine affection is shown in the way you respect your own father. Okay. It's, it's the basic human virtue of respect. You begin from there. Now, when it comes to God, there's plenty more to love, right? And it's not only a question of respecting God, but we owe God a lot more uh, 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 than respect. Right? We owe God adoration. We owe God uh, plenty of other rational and sentimental, um, uh, um, what's the right word, um, address, okay? But it begins with a simple affection. Simple affection. Simple uh, filial devotion. Okay? This is the virtue of piety, actually. The virtue of piety. To have the, sim the simple respect and affection for your father. Same thing is true with God. Right? When we pray, we pray with affection. We pray with love. Then, third, we pray with simplicity. With simplicity. Look at how little Ava asks Papa permission to watch her cartoons in the afternoon. Right? She comes and say, what do you say when you ask Papa to watch? What do you say? Come, come, come. You show them. How do you ask? <laughs> She's shy. Okay, what does she say? She goes there to my office. Okay, she goes to my office. And then, how do you ask Papa? Can you tell them? How do you ask Papa? Thank you. Oh, thank you already. <laughs> yes, I know you're very grateful every time I give you permission to watch, right? But when you ask Papa to watch, what do you say? Please. Please, yes, very good, you see. And she comes around and says, Papa, watch. Papa, watch. Ah, right? Right? Isn't that what you say? Yes? Huh? She comes and says, Papa, watch. See? With simplicity. Nothing complicated. Right? The simplicity of a child who has... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, honey. Wait. Let's stay here. There you go. The simplicity of a child who climbs up to her father and just asks... Without 
cooking up a complicated story and justifying why why you need this, why you have to have that or anything else like that. Very simply, just ask. Right? Ask. Sim simply. Like a child would ask. So we should have the simplicity of a child when we pray. Okay? And God will always respond. As he already said, knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. Ask, ask, ask. But then look. Look at what, what Jesus says. What will Jesus give us? He says, Your heavenly Father will give you good things. Will give good things to those who ask Him. What does that mean? Well, you know, your Father knows best. God the Father knows best. Right? He, he knows that maybe while you might want a few things for yourself, it may not be the best for you. It may not be the best. And maybe your, your, uh, your mind and or your, your emotion or your situation at the moment might cloud your way of thinking might cloud the way you are understanding the realities that you are immersed in at the moment. And therefore, sometimes what you're praying for is, is clouded, is, is, uh, 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 um, yeah, <laughs> I'm struggling to find the right word, but it's, it's clouded by lack of clarity of what you might really need at that moment. So, okay, you pray under those circumstances, but God who is watching you, right, knows that, you know, my child, you actually need something else. And I'm going to give you that something else. I'm going to give you what is best for you. Why? Because you are my child. And as a father, I only want what is best for you. I only want what's best for you. And our Father God deals with us that same way. He gives us what's best for us. And sometimes what is best for us is deprivation of some good things. Okay? Sometimes that's what's good for our soul, to be deprived of some good things. And that is why His answer to our request can be no. Because you don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what's good for you. Okay? So go ahead. Go ahead. Knock on the door of heaven. Go ahead. Cry to heaven. Go ahead. Pound on the gates of heaven. Asking our Father God in prayer. With humility. With affection. With simplicity. And God will always answer and give us what is good for us. Okay? Are you ready to say goodbye, Eva? Bye! Ah! <laughs> Go ahead and try it. Bye! Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have something else to ask from them, those who are listening to us. Would you do us a favor to please subscribe to the channel Catholic Praxis on YouTube and on Facebook if you would just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Praxis to follow and like our page on Facebook and uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel. And you know why? It is not... <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It is not for any other intention or purpose, but rather... For the benefit of many other people. You see, uh, just a little background on these commentaries every morning. We have been doing this for many years. I don't remember. When was the... Anyway, we have been doing this for a few years. And uh, one day, I just happened to post it on Facebook. And somebody suggested, Hey, Jake, why don't you share this to the world? Why don't you, you know, do this Facebook Live and do this uh, and put it on YouTube because we can't always catch it on Facebook and maybe, you know, we'll catch it on YouTube. So after uh, a few years of struggling 
uh, through this uh, thought process, we decided, okay, okay, let's do that. So we started posting it on Facebook. And now we created a, a, a YouTube channel for it. And the response is just overwhelming. A lot of people are saying that um, they have been helped by these kinds of commentaries. So, so we're encouraged to do it uh, if it's helping people. Now, if you who are listening right now are convinced that there is some benefit, not only to yourselves, but maybe to your family members, to your friends, and to other people, the general public, the general population, or our Catholic uh, friends and family, then maybe you can be an evangelizer just by cooperating with our efforts here. And when I say just being cooperators of our efforts here, it could be as simple as following us on the channels, giving us a like, subscribing on YouTube, and don't forget to click that bell icon on YouTube so that you get a notification every time we post new things. And please like us also on Facebook so that other people on Facebook uh, will find us and will well also benefit from, from uh, whatever learnings um, are, are uh, available on this particular uh, channel. Have a good day, everybody, and thank you for accompanying us in this journey. Have a good day now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Okay, let's go.